Guys, it's Jillian here, and I just want to get the input of some people about what they think about fuel. Fuel? Like gas? It's running out? Diesel fuel is too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's energy that's good, that you can use. Fun They're bratty kids that don't care about anybody else and feel like they're on fire. Yeah, well, um, with what I've experienced yeah. with uh, fuel, um, I remember reading in Second Genesis, which would be in the front here, uh, that fuel talks about how people are going to hell, and uh, that's what I think about fuel. I think fuel is um, a bunch of sinners, tons of sinners, mm -hmm. a couple faithful people, yeah. mainly Jimmy, yeah. Sam, just destined straight to hell. You have like nothing good to say really about us. Like it's not like lit or anything. Like um, you, I mean, anything. Jimmy and Sam are cool. Is, is that it? Is there hope for the end? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly, whatever you have to, order as many as you have to. Yeah. I. I mean, I can't control that though. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll be there in a second. We'll go over it. Okay. Yeah, see ya. Hey, well, Pastor, I really gotta talk to you real fast. Is it okay? Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, what's going on? Um, what? Is it important or? It, yeah, I mean, it's pretty important. It doesn't look important. Just wait. Okay. I was just like wondering, what do you think about fuel? This is what you want to ask me? I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, it is. What do you mean what I think about fuel? Like, what, we're pretty great people, I know, but like, some people don't think that. Some people think that like, fuel is not lit, or fuel is dead, and like, yeah, that I, that hurts, so. Who's saying that? You know, just honor, vivacity, roots, progression. So everyone. So, uh, yeah, everyone. Everyone. Yeah. What do I think about fuel? Mm -hmm. Like, you're honest, like, like, I'm not trying to, like, get anything out of you, but, like, I just want to know, personally. Just between us. Door shut? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. If you tell anyone... Promise? I promise. Don't tell anyone. I think you swear. It's, okay. it's just, be just between us. Okay. <laughs> Feels lit. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, like, fuel is lit. To the max. Like, the like word, a burning like house. The word lit died like months ago, mm -hmm. and fuel is still on fire. They're so lit. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I feel that. Okay. All right. Don't tell anyone. I, of tell course us? not. Okay. No, never. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks. Okay. Yeah, All that right. was weird. Yep. for Selena and Sierra as they come out here tonight. What is up, everyone? We are from the Circle Fuel, otherwise known as Fuel is Lit, right? All right, turn to the person next to you and tell them how lit Fuel is. Okay, Jesus is lit too, I guess. You know, we always make jokes about Fuel being lit, but tonight we want to explain to you what being lit actually means and what it means to be on fire for God. Since the night is already going to be hot, we thought we'd spice things up right from the start. Come on out, guys. So we have four different kinds of peppers. A bell pepper, a serrano pepper, a habanero, and a jalapeno. So we, these are
these were all decided randomly. So each person has a random pepper that we assign to them. think about how we use the word fire to describe things like dude that was so lit or your shirt is fire man but if you think about it if your shirt was actually on fire that'd be so painful like it's fire it would hurt so much so we have a video to explain that Yeah, we all laugh at those fire fails, but fire is actually dangerous. You guys might remember Pastor Jeff, he's the lead pastor at this church. Um, he was actually burned when he was a kid, and a large percentage of his body was burned. So um, that's like a dangerous fire. But when we become on fire for God, that's a dangerous fire to the enemy. And um, tonight we're just going to be talking about how to fuel the right fire. So the first step to start a fire is to ignite, ignite it. it. What are you doing? Uh, I, thought, I thought I was supposed to say that. No, I was. Um, sorry, it won't happen again. I'm sorry. Okay, it better not. Okay, it's okay, fine. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, so what does ignition really mean? There are three things for an ignition to happen. There's heat, oxygen, and fuel. Is lit. Am I right? Yeah! Stop. Just stop. Okay. You just really need to stop. Carry on. I'm sorry. Okay. So once you have all three of these things, it will start an ignition. For example, let's pretend we're all outside. You know, it's it's getting kind of chilly out, so we want to start a fire, but all we have is a magnifying glass and some wood. So we don't have any matches, so we can only use the magnifying glass and the sun to start a fire. So if you went to science class, there's a thing called refraction, and it's when um, waves are rays, so in this case we're talking about the sun's rays, and it reflects off of the glass of the magnifying glass, and then it focuses on the fire, and it starts a fire. So once we set ourselves up in a position to be aligned with the sun, S-O-N, his light can refract off of us and ignite a relationship with God.
So heat, oxygen, and fuel equals a fire triangle. So these three things spark an ignition and start a fire. So once you have the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, he will spark an ignition in you. So this first person we're going to bring up, he's going to share his story about how he first ignited his fire for God. Come on out, Jimmy. Let's give him a hand. Okay, so the first time I was really ignited for God was actually Collision 2014. I'm uncool. And uh, the scripture verse for that, if you want to put it up on the screen, it was 1 Corinthians 2.2. 2, and it just said that, For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. And that just really, like, it resonated with me, like, a lot because I just, I needed to hear it. I was at that time in my life, and I just... It just, it hit me hard, and it was a great, a great weekend, and, uh, but here, here's a video of my four years ago self. Uh, I play baseball, football, and basketball. They were like, oh yeah, people who go to church are really stupid, and like, they don't, but it's like, there's no God in there or anything. Oh yeah, so that, that was me. That was, that was my young, going into freshman year self, okay? Yeah, it was great, but uh, no, like, before that collision, I was the guy that would make an excuse up for Wednesdays. I'd say, oh, I got family stuff to do, or oh, I'm going to go hang out with some people from another school. I wouldn't, like, tell them what I was doing, and I, the same thing was for Sundays. I never, I never came out and, like, proclaimed Jesus' name in front of my uh, classmates or teammates or whatever it was. And then collision came, and it just, it spoke to me in volumes because I, I realized it, that it was myself and that I needed to be uncool to better be connected to Jesus. And after that collision, I went back to school and all through freshman, sophomore, junior, and then seniors last year, um, by the time senior hit, everybody knew what I did on Wednesday nights. Everybody, like people I didn't even talk to, they, they could tell you that I was going to church on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. And uh, it was just great to, to see that change in my life because, I mean, it was just super powerful. And other than that, or aside from that, um, my life really did a 180. And that was because of the whole I'm uncool. But it really hit me hard after because I realized that uh, the devil was really trying to stop me from getting there. Because um, before that collision, a week before, I was actually sick. I was in bed for the whole week. I was throwing up. I had a fever all week, and I just wasn't going to go. And then Pastor Dave decided to text my mom and tell, him, or tell her that he really wanted me to go. And uh, so I went. They held the buses for me, and I went. And uh, I'm, just, I'm really happy that he felt God in that moment just tell him that I needed to go. Because if I wouldn't have, I don't know if I would have encountered that moment I had with God, or I don't know where I would be right now. And I'm just super grateful for everything that happened. That was awesome. Thanks, Jimmy. Keep, Keep that, that fire, fire shining bright. bright. What are you doing? Uh, I'm saying my line. That is my line. It says right there, that's my line. It's mine. We practice this. Okay, just because you're older than me does not mean you're the boss of me. Um, yeah, a minute is a big difference, so. Um, I don't think Girls. so. And it I'm sure is. younger people Girls. here can relate to me. I don't they're think tired so. of being Girls. the younger sibling. No? Girls, we're not doing this tonight, okay? <laughs> we, came here, we came here to bring the heat for God's word, right? And we're going to do it. You guys are going to keep this freaky twin stuff at home, okay? Because it's freaking him out. It's freaking her out. It's freaking everybody out, okay? It's just freaking. All right? You got it? Sorry, sorry Jimmy. Jimmy. Jinx. What? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Don't sorry. you dare make me put this foot down. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Jimmy. You know, that was an amazing testimony. We can decide to first let God ignite a relationship with him, but after that, God calls us to shine his fire. So he um, sets up opportunities for us to do that. So um, it was like so cool that collision, he wasn't even supposed to go. And then God, that's where he first um, ignited that um, relationship with him. So there's someone in the Bible where this happens to a person. Um, he, 
His name is Moses, and he was a shepherd, and God wanted to use him. So let's look at Exodus 3, 2 through 3. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. And that's just crazy because um, Moses noticed God lighting that bush on fire, and he had to walk up to it and see what it was all about. And um, that's what God does to us. He makes us on fire so that other people can come up to us, and they can notice his fire shining through, and then they can inquire about it and come to know Jesus through it. See, once we notice God's fire shining in someone or something else, it causes us to wonder about that spark, and it makes us want to have that much fire for God as they do. So um, God called Moses then at that point, to go out and shine his fire throughout all of Egypt. Um, so I don't know about any of you guys, but my mom doesn't let me light candles in my room because she's afraid I'll burn the house down, which in her defense is an, a reasonable concern. But anyway, so um, I just feel bad because like all of my friends give me candles and stuff for my birthday or for Christmas, and they just sit in my room unlit. But we can compare that to our relationship with God. If we never light it on fire, we'll never see the potential it truly has. So. Um, if you feel like you set up the relationship with God, but you never lit it on fire, it's just there for display and as a label, but we really need to shine through and live up to the name. Yeah, exactly. And you won't know how your faith is, um, can, can truly shine until it is tested. So we're going to bring out another person who's going to tell you her story about how she was tested multiple times, but she chose to sh shine God's light through it. Come on out, Jillian. Hi! Yeah, so in the beginning of high school, I went to the church very minimally. Like, if I would have died, I probably would have gone to heaven, but it would have been because of God's grace and not because of anything I did. So, as a high schooler, I let every emotion get to me and mainly decided that I, when I, I just, when I was mad, I just wanted to sit in my sadness and never really chose joy. And that was all really until Collision 2016. Um, I just found myself at the altar and um, just kind of like broken before the Lord and I just really wanted to know what it felt like to have him inside of me. So as I just like gave my whole heart to him, um, that was like kind of the turning point and kind of like the Jillian 2.0 that came out afterwards. So um, I left Collision and like there was a noticeably there was noticeably a difference in my life. I got rid of friendships that weren't really um, surrounded by God in a relationship that um, I probably really shouldn't have been in. So yeah, um, that was, um, it wasn't a perfect relationship after that with God. Um, I definitely struggled and we definitely had our hills and valleys, but like overall, um, I did have something with him and with God having something is everything. So. Um, yeah, once um, I got into a place where, like, my relationship with God mattered more than any relationship with, like, man alone, like, I, it was really good, and so I chose, like, the unpopular opinion of, like, giving my heart to the Lord rather, and so that I could have just a place to have it one day, and so that meant more to me. Um, after complete, re um, surrendering, surrendering myself to God, um, I chose to take the opportunity to be a light seriously, and that was something that I just really felt that like my school needed, and so I was able to just be um, able to have that in my life. And so I finally got like the joy from the Lord. And so He ignites us so that we can shine our hearts and our giftings so shine bright. After stand, standing firm in the Lord for quite some time, um, something not very good happened at our school, and um, it came to a point when a student and a friend of many had um, tried committing suicide. And so like our whole school was kind of wrecked by this and it was so out of the blue. And um, it was, this was only a week before see you at the poll and there was just something on my heart where I was like, okay, I need to do something for my school. We're all struggling so hard and I know what I have, they will receive so well. Like I know that if I give out God, like they need that right now. And so God kind of put it on my heart to just move up see you at the poll a week so that um, we could have the whole school pray for him, and so I texted Pastor Dave and Sid, and I was like, hey, so is it possible to move up to see you at the poll? And my response, or their response was, Jill, it's a national day. So after I like explained to them everything, what had happened, they're like, oh, of course, like, here, let's, um, 
they just like tried to give me everything that would um, try to help have this be successful in any ways. And so it was really cool because um, after it all happened and we moved everything up, after we were done praying um, for the student, I looked up and like there were so many people there. Like I couldn't see the end of where everybody was at. And that was like monumental for Elmont because there's not very many like outspoken Christians at school. So that was super cool for us. Um, so we may have had a death, but what happened in this school was a new life. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, also, with the CU at the Pole, like, that was not my idea at all because um, before that, the year before, I, like, didn't even go to CU at the Pole. Like, that was so scary for me because I was, like, too nervous to just um, show my faith to others. So, like, I think that's a really big testimony of, like, what God can do with you if you're just open and willing to let him use you. Um, you have the opportunity to hide your light, but if you do, it might dis um, diminish. So if I wouldn't have done that, I honestly don't think I'd be here right now. My faith would not be as big as it was then. And um, yeah, your shining can help others ignite. The way you show off the love that God has given you is like really big because people are always watching you as a Christian. And so we need to um, just kind of like show others with our positivity and like our good actions who we are in him. Um, the other day I had a conversation with somebody about um, them being like, oh wow, yeah, Jill, like, in a group of people, like, you seem like you're the happiest. And I was like, actually, I'm not. Like, I'm actually super mad all the time. But I chose to let the Lord work through me and just bring joy so that other people, maybe if they're having a bad day, God can use me to help them. So, yes. So there's, I've kind of learned throughout this year that um, there is joy in God's character. And if I'm striving to be like God, I have to have joy in my character. So, um, yeah, so I feel like if any of you guys are in like a mediocre relationship with God right now, um, you guys have the opportunity to become a 2.0. Like you have the opportunity to just change your whole life and you will have an opportunity at the end of this service. So 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7 says, In all this you greatly rejoice. Through, um, through now for a little while you may have had to suffer great grief or suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Those have come so that the, um, the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even through refined even though refined by fire may result in praise glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed every day I'm living in hopes to give glory to God and you should too yeah let's give her a hand that was a great testimony of shining your light and shining your fire for God and um, it's great to keep that fire burning and shining bright and when we think of fire, we think of like, oh, that's so awesome. Like, let's go to a bonfire or something like that. But um, which fire are you fueling when we talk about our own fire? Um, when you have a fire, you need like something to keep it burning, like gasoline or matches or wood or something like that. Um, and when you stop fueling the fire, it will die and it will go out. So which fire in your life are you fueling, your fire with God or a fire with your own desires? What happens when you fuel the wrong fire and your fire with God burns out? You have to relight it. Um, how many of you in the room have a pet? Just raise your hand. All right, most of you. Um, let's go back to the time you first got it. Let's reflect on that moment. Okay, so when you first got your pet, whether it be like a dog or a fish or a cat, you wanted to spend all your time with it, am I right? Yeah, so I remember the first time I got my cat, I was nine years old, um, and like when I got her, I was just so excited to spend all my time with her and just like pet her. If you don't know, I'm obsessed with cats, so obviously I'd pick cats to talk about, but anyway, <laughs> so um, I would just spend all my time with it. I would like play with it and like pet it and stuff like that, um, but after a while, like school came, because I got her in the summertime, so school came, and then that preoccupied my mind, and um, something newer in my life came along and she wasn't so new anymore. So I started to neglect my time with her and I started to neglect my attention towards her. Um, and that can happen with our relationship with God. Like we can be so on fire for God when we first um, become ignited and we um, start to shine it and stuff. But after we um, spend our time away from it and we stop um, fueling the fire, then the fire can start to go out. Um, so which um, relationship are you nurturing? Your relationship with God or your relationship with other things? 
See, that's why relationships can distract us because um, if you get into a relationship at the wrong time, then that can start to put your fire out because um, you're not spiritually ready to be in a relationship. And it just um, cannot end that well if you're not spiritually ready. Um, so we start to nurture that relationship more than our relationship with God. And we start to fuel the wrong fire. And that's why our fire with God goes out. Yeah, so this last person that we're going to bring out is going to tell her story of how she relit her fire. And it's kind of funny because I met this person when I was in sixth grade, and I noticed that she was going to church and she was like a Christian. And I always like admired that because I had stopped going to church at that time. And then as like years went on, um, circumstances happened. And then I was invited to church by someone, and that's when I came here. And this person that I'm talking about wasn't going to church at the time. And it's just kind of funny because we've invited her back here, and so now we all go to the same church, and it's funny how um, our fire is relit once we put the effort into it. So this last person, let's give a hand for Michaela. Okay, um, so as they mentioned, um, I went to church for a long time, like before I hit high school, and um, I, was, I was pretty confident with my walk with God, and um, I just, I knew I was at with God, and I was, you know, growing, and then it was, uh, it was my sophomore year, just the beginning, and I got into a relationship, and, you know, everyone who's been in a relationship, like, you know, when that, what that first feels like, it feels like, oh my gosh, someone likes me, like, wow, and a lot of times that can just become, like, really overwhelming, and um, for me, I, I thought I was in love. I was 15. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, but throughout that relationship, I, um, I, I let my emotions take over, and when I let my emotions take over, um, my, my fire for God started to fade. And throughout that time, it was about a two-year span, um, the devil really used that relationship to pull me away from God, and I became extremely depressed. And I was just really dissatisfied with my life, and I just felt like I had no purpose. And I would stay up at night, and I would tell myself that I had no purpose, that, I, that God had no plan for me, that I just, I just had no hope for anything. And there wasn't a week that went by for two years that I didn't think about killing myself. My fire for not only God had gone out, but my fire for life had gone out too. I remember April 12, 2017, I was here, and the message that night was called The Sound of the Cross. And at the end of service, they showed a, they showed a movie clip from The Passion of the Christ, and they showed the part where Jesus was being crucified. And in my head, I just, I just couldn't imagine why, why someone would go through all that pain just to save me from mine. I just, I couldn't fathom it. And that night, I just, I just realized that that was true love. It wasn't any relationship that I got in. It wasn't anything like that. It was, that was true love. Jesus dying on the cross is true love. And that was when my fire was relit. And as I talked about, that fire is very painful. And so for the next four months, those were very painful for me. I was trying my hardest to let go of the things that I was holding on to. I was holding on to the relationship. I was just holding on to the past, just the thoughts that I had. And it took me four months, but I finally let go. And my, my depression was just burned to a crisp. It, it was, it's gone. And once I finally became devoted to God, I just felt like, I felt joy. I felt, I just felt real happiness in my life. And one thing that I want to leave with is if your flame ever went out and you feel like it can never be relit, it, it can. I promise you. If it weren't for God, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be standing here right now. I'm not even sure I would be alive. And you can relight the fire that you had for God. I promise you. 
and he will, when you come back, he will have so much joy. In Luke 15, 20, it says, so he got up and went to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. And when we come back, when we come back to God, that's how he is to us. He's so overjoyed that we finally, we got out of our dark place and that we're finally trusting him and we're believing in him and he's just so happy that we're back and he loves us no matter what, even in those dark times because I know that God was in those dark times even when I could feel nothing and I could see nothing. But God was still there and he brought me out of those times. God wants you to come home no matter how far you've gone astray and he will come running to meet you once he sees your flame has been relit. Let's give her a hand. The reason we need to be on fire for God is for moments like that. See, we saw the fire in Michaela when we were all in sixth grade. Me and Sierra weren't going to church at that time. We just believed in God, but we never really um, lit the fire. And so we saw the fire in her, but after she stopped fueling the fire, um, it went out. And then at that time, God found us, and he met us right where we're at, we were at, and then he lit the fire in us. And because she saw the fire in us, we invited her back, and God relit the fire in her. See, we ask ourselves, well, why do I need to be on fire for God? Like, I don't really need to, like, go out and tell people about God because, like, you know, I'm going to heaven, and that's good enough. See, there's people in this room that are going to go to hell. See, Michaela could have gone to hell. But God brought her back, and that's why we need to be on fire for God. So think of it like this. Um, when you go out and invite someone to church, you are lighting this fire. You are spreading this fire and spreading this light all over the world. And you think of it as a spiritual forest fire. Once you light someone else's fire, it is inextinguishable. It, is, um, it cannot be contained. And it will spread all over the world. You've all heard of the saying from Smokey the Bear, only you can prevent forest fires. It's all down to us now. Um, we have to go out and we have to light this fire so we can spread the forest fire. If we don't do it, we are preventing the spiritual forest fire of the world being saved and hearing of Jesus' light. So I wrote this spoken word, and it's just an encouragement and challenge to go out and share this light. The flame is the highest it's ever been, glowing with a light as bright as the sun, shining on the world and illuminating the dark. He has turned on the light. The flame burns brighter and brighter until every candle has been lit, until everyone has felt the vitality, until every person is ignited with the flame. He has turned on the light. Days go by. The flame is growing, moving to every area of the world, an inextinguishable spark firing up the world, all because he has turned on the light. Time keeps passing. The flame is only being amplified. What an honor it is to know this light and become heirs to share it. We are rooted in the light, stepping out of the darkness. This vivacity is new and thrilling, and we are preparing to go, to go out and release this light. The aftershock cannot be contained. The world's redemption is fueling our flame. The light has come, and forever it will reign. This is the time. There's no backing down. We can only progress to everyone now because he has turned on the light. Come on, give Jesus some praise tonight. Give Jesus some praise.